one way all the time. That gal of mine, she's one way all the time. She takes the blues away and satisfies my mind. Bueno, vamos a dar comienzo. Okay, we're going to commence the press conference. Please, can the photographers? Arracha León. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. It's a pleasure for us, the San Sebastian Film Festival, to commence this press conference, which corresponds to the co-production, which is Spanish and Argentinian, Relatos Salvajes, Wild Tales, which is projected within the Pearls section of the San Sebastian Film Festival. We have the fortune of having with, with us in the presence at this press conference the director and co-scriptwriter of the film, no, the director and, and uh, scriptwriter Damien Cifron, as well as two of the main actors, Ricardo Darín and Leonardo Esvaraglia, and the two producers of the film, Pedro Almodóvar and Agustín Almodóvar. So let's commence uh, with the first questions. Hi, everyone. Hi. Good afternoon. Above all, congratulate you because from the, I've been here from the first day. It's the first projection where constantly the room, just like I has, it's, didn't stop applauding. I think it's the film of the festival for me. On the other hand, I would like to ask Pedro, what drew your attention uh, of this script when purchasing it to buy it? And that is a save for production, I think. Another film that doesn't have a nationality, it's a film that could be understood from whatever country, Argentina, Spain, China, whatever you're from, because every, we've all wanted to do a play a wild tale, and uh, to the, the, the director, Damien, was, it was difficult to shoot this film with the pressure of having uh, Mr. Abadora behind you or these actors in front of you, and congratulations. Let me switch my mobile off, because uh, it just, uh, just rang. Well... The first piece of news that I received, just like the rest of the Spaniards, was Tiempo de Valientes, and I loved the film. And as of that moment, uh, on probation, that's what I said, I said to my brother, let's be careful with this guy, let's take notice of what he's doing. I don't know what moment my brother Agustin, who's the guy who really does the production work, on everything that involved in production, he got in touch with the Daniel's producers, but the truth is, Damien, sorry, you are a jet lag, but it's affecting me. No, 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 because like Shelly, I impregnate, just like what the, I impregnate the fat that we both have. We've got the same stomach and belly, the same size belly. And what I liked about him was his jet lag. Also, I'm going to call you Daniel several times, but Damien. <laughs> Daniel, no. It, Awaiting the script it took a long time. When I re read the script, I was fascinated. I remember the moment. I remember the place in bed where I read it, because I read it in bed where I usually read at night. And I didn't ever tell you this. No, no, no. We never had so much intimacy beforehand. And I was on my own, so therefore I could focus on the script. And I was very passionate about the, excited about the film. And I had a lot of fun reading it. I have... It's not that it concerns me, but uh, sketch type stories in general, in general, even the good ones and not uh, and a lot of the Italian ones, shorts that are stuck together, but I thought the idea of not giving a title to the, the different fragments because the truth is that the film 
has is absolutely linked together and was it is noticeable in the script that is to say it, it has the same flavor the same tone the same intensity the same humor and the same um, uh, angry side to it but when I read it and my 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 brother read it with the same point of view with the same stomach he's also on Moldova and we called, we said, Alice, we can't uh, allow this opportunity to go by. And this is where we are today. Now it's your turn. Well, I want to thank you very much for the way of inaugurating uh, this, this press conference. Thank you very much for your kind words. I would say that it was easy to make the film with the support of the Almodovar brothers and these two actors. Uh, much easier than doing it with people who are less experienced and less passionate and less intelligent, that is to say, if you, I was asked about the pressure several times or one can feel when one works with people when one uh, uh, admires and the truth is it, things have become very easy because it, you've got, it's much clearer, it's much more experience, a lot of energy, a lot of backing energy in the project and for things to work out well. So therefore everything was really a sum of uh, different elements. Hi, I'm over here, congratulations for this marvellous film which is very serious and it talks about humiliation and those people that are humiliated but not in a solemn manner. Then the actors and the director, could you talk a bit more about that idea that the film has which is that powerful? And Pedro, we have realized that if living is easy with your eyes closed is the film that the Spanish Academy has chosen. I'm not too sure whether in Argentina are you going to go to Hollywood with this film, which has a lot of possibilities as well? And Pedro, you've got a lot of power in your films in Spain also. And Spain is very angry. I'm not too sure whether your next project is intimate or is social. Is angry in general, not only with me, no? Okay. Spain, you know, you know with whom? Yes, very good. I agree with you. Sorry, but I'm going to direct things, but it's horrible. About two directors in the same table, Leonardo, it's your time to talk. No, you, you talk about yourself, the film, what you want. What they've just been asked. Well, okay, up to me. The question is as regards to us. I'm sorry, we can't get the question now. She's not got a microphone. Well, I think that the challenge of each of every one of us vis-a-vis -vis this film was that in 20 minutes we can tell so many different feelings and emotions and so many transitions and we did this uh, hand in hand along with Damian who to a certain sense starts to conceive that cinematographic marvelous cinematographic tales along with the audience at the same time it's as if he had the audience in front of him, uh, with him shooting with you at the same time with an enormous amount of transparency and at least in my case the most complicated thing is how to understand those little hinges, those little transitions to make this enormous question and issue of a violent as ascent of all of the different characters. Well, mine wasn't that complicated. It was quite clear what Damian had designed in his script and then it was even clearer when I had the opportunity of talking to him and to come to an agreement and take the whole journey together. I was quite fortunate to meet him and we shared certain obsessions in favor of perfection in certain senses, whether it work comes out, whether it works out or it doesn't work, that's always a desire. But nevertheless, the truth was, it was quite a pleasurable trip and job, and that's what happened to me. Is that it? What about the Oscar? It's up to you. Begonia asked you. Uh, the script, uh, the script has a lot of discourse. What did you want me to say? To explain. Oh, talking about humiliation, I think he says. Yes. Solemnity is the enemy here, I believe. I think wherever there's solemnity, there's something suspicious there. There's something that's not working right or something that's being hidden. I think in art, we've already got to get rid of it, solemnity. But in this case, I coincide that the film does visit the issue of humiliation 
or runs down people or get, talks about people who are humiliated. The true issue is what happens after or what happens that the desire of, of release and liberation vis-a-vis -vis to an external ex aggression and humiliation, the invasion of your own vital space or living space, the pleasure that that occurs to be able to respond to that aggression. Well, you were saying whether we were angry, we're in a country that, uh, that peop people is angry with us, but a lot, this country uses a lot of euphemisms, especially the dominating class. I, my perception is that more than angry, I think we're d deeply desperate. I think it's a mixture of absolute loss and the, and the deepest and darkest depression at the same time. So therefore, well, I wanted to summarize and be brief. Oh, how can I do this? Well, no, when I say we've got so many examples here in Spain, Damian, you can't imagine to make a, a film, you should come and make a film about us. What's happening or in our country, and I wanted to say this two or three days ago, the famous Gallardón law that's been passed, and then he's been resigned, and he, and to get rid of that law, it's enormous to see, and I'm not saying anything new, and that is the proposal of making this law is made due to electoral means in mind, thinking about uh, the, the vote that comes from uh, the other side of the mountains, which is very doubtful if they're going to achieve them or not. And uh, it's taken away and it's eliminated, and, that, and that's the reason why the whole Spanish, all of the Spanish people should celebrate it. And it's eliminated because of the same objective, the, the objectives that, that are equally have to do with electoral means. So therefore, my impression is that that where are the citizens? What's this? Where do they stand? What well, though? There, these lawyers, these are politi politicians are making laws to resolve our problems, to avoid our tragedies, and so therefore, we can die each and every one of us with their own particular tragedy. And this has happened to many people jumping out of a window of the floor of where they were saying farewell, and so on and so forth. So I think all of this. The governor, the people that govern us, doesn't even think about it. Don't even think about it. That even it doesn't affect them, and that's horrible. That's uh, terrifying. But we've got to celebrate that. We've got a film here which is full of humor, very noir type of uh, uh, humor, enormous. And that's how I think humor should be. Not us, but good Spanish humor is very noir, as you know very well. And and we're celebrating this, and I'm celebrating also my 35th anniversary in the city. I came with Pepe for the first time. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Okay, thank you very much. The poor guy's got a hoarse voice because he's been singing it all the time. 20, 24 hours singing me this song. An artistic birthday. In 1980, I, we came with Pepe, and here we are again. And, and I have marvelous uh, memories of that moment and that festival. Let's see, everything is a joy so far. And we are also with everyone else that don't have the joy of being in this uh, tale. But we have had a bill film to, de film to defend and a film to celebrate. Yes, you were saying... You're explaining the situation of Spain, but I ask you as a producer or as a director, wouldn't you take Damian or Daniel, or whatever his name is, and do a Spanish type of wild tales or relatos salvejes, and instead of Darin to make him go to the crane, send him to a ministry of culture and do something. Did that occur to you? Or is it Darin looks really good for a minister. He could. He looks very, a very professional type minister. Okay. Well, as a producer of Damian, the first rule is to not impose anything upon him. I think that if he's got any interest in coming here to Spain, he will tell us and we'll find a good place for him to stay at. <clears throat> but for, it's more this would correspond to me, but unfortunately until now, albeit our culture is present in, each of, any, in every one of the frames that I've directed so far in my films, it's not social cinema that I make. I would love to do it, but... Other, other genres appear, another mixture of genres, but in any case, we invite Damian to inspire himself upon us and make a film. Well, okay, Damian, Damian is, 
<clears throat> we're a very generous country. He's got his own universe, and we have to allow. He's very young, so still to develop that in his film, the films he makes. Are you happy to be here in San Sebastian, Damien? I'm, ve I'm very happy, truly happy. What are, what are your, what do you refer when you write? What do you think about? Billy Wilder and Bill Hitch. We had enjoyable time with those men who were more than on the edge of a nervous breakdown. And I would like to ask you whether it was the rage within this film, which to a certain extent encouraged you to produce it. And Ricardo Darín, whether you're aware of the fact that you play with an, you're playing with an advantage upon your colleagues because you're the character with which the audience is going to feel most identified with, I'm sure. La, uh The script, the main thing, we, that's the way we work as well. We base ourselves we, on the script. And that is, I like all of those moments of rage and anger and catharsis as well. The theater and the cinema is full of catharsis and the real life, unfortunately, as well. But what we liked, the script was very good. That is, it's really incredible that a script of this nature comes into your hands and, and, and we were pursuing you, and you were aware of this. We spent years after him. It was a pleasant uh, chase, and I recommend it to you, by the way. So therefore, it's a story like a fairy tale. We wanted to work with him the moment he had a script. He sent it to us, and it was a marvelous script. And here we are waiting for the next uh, script, whatever it is. We'll accompany him in the same trajectory. He's still got This film has still got a long way to go, nevertheless. And as regards to me, sorry, no, I don't think I've got an advantage, first of all, for several reasons. I think each and every one of the tales that make up this film have their own identity and they have their own power and strength. And I have the great fortune of sharing this, participating in this cast where there are this work which is much more outstanding than my work that have required much more delivery and a higher level of perfection than my character. My character, my character and I needed because the question was much more internal or interior, but it would be very poor on my behalf to say I've written a highlight of Leonardo's work in his tale, which I think is extraordinary. I think is one of the, the best male acting performance I've seen in the last uh, few in the last few years let me give you a kiss de la, de la misma. in the same way that I would like to highlight the work of Erika Rivas in her tale and that of my colleagues Oscar Martinez, Rica Cortese, Julieta Darío all of them have done a formidable piece of work and the truth is I know the Bombita, because of obvious reasons it's not worthwhile explaining, covers the ge generalized fantasies, not only of Argentina and Spain, but probably of the whole world. Because who hasn't felt in a certain way humiliated or run down by some bureaucratic run down or by something that we've not shared uh, in some case when we receive a piece of paper. Uh, but it it's he's a he manages to achieve easy empathy with the audience, but for the audience, specific audience, that is, those that like good cinema and good work in impeccable directing and the very good and upwards performance of the actors, I think this feast that Damien has invited it to us, who is the true work that we should highlight. His directing, the script, and the production, because the effort was enormous. This feast that he proposed as actors to us is the same feast that he proposes to the audience. That is to say, to go through that accumulation of different emotions, which are such a contrast that allows us to behave on a plateau or in a film theater watching a film just like kids do it when they watch cartoons or where they see children's films that's it to participate actively is something that i hadn't seen for a long time we adults usually hide our emotions kids don't and and children don't so that's it i think what deserves an applause is the 
how Damien has been daring enough because you've got to have a lot of gall and to thank him very much that he's dead to remind us that we can still behave as children to show our emotions. I would like to clear up the following. I'm very happy with what I've just said. Buenas tardes. Hi, good afternoon. My well, the truth is, having I'm over here. I'm over on this side. That having you all of you in front of me, one doesn't know who to ask the question to. But I'm going to take a full advantage to ask both actors. Yesterday we saw Leonardo Sfaraglia in a very drastically opposed difference, especially in the tone of the film, the, uh, the character he portrayed. I would like to know roles like this, albeit they're serious and very severe, and um, they make you laugh because we couldn't stop laughing in the cinema theatre. For the actors, it's like a liberation. It frees you. When you have the script in front of you, when you work upon them, do you undertake your work in a serious way? Or as you're aware of how hilarious the character is, or, or how tremendously funny they're going to be, is that for you uh, liberation? And that, that's allow you to let your hair down? No, the true uh, liberation starts when you find uh, such a well-written script and then a director that is quite clear what he, what he dreamed of doing and he's not prepared to be taken away. And he's faithful to what he dreamed, let's say. He's not going to be let off the track. I am a witness of this because in order to summarize what happened, we finished shooting and three or four months later, I was called from production to suggest that we needed a few more takes in the tale that I had intervened in. Imagine what I, the face, I was in some other story. I didn't even know what they were talking about, but quite very intelligently and cautiously, they invited me to see the first setup and edit that he had of this tale and then I was I noticed that the truth he was right we lacked those four or five takes and that's what we did that shows you quite clearly when a person or a director is not prepared to give in to what exactly he had planned beforehand and it also demonstrates that there's a great production behind it that backed him up and who understood it and continued all the way to the end. And that's not very frequent, doesn't happen too often, but that is a great liberation. Do you realize that all of a sudden you're working in a team in which everyone's going in the same direction and looking in the same direction and there's no contradiction And that? The truth be said was very, very good. And that also, may, I'm very happy to have said what I've just said as well. Basically, because I establish a good relationship with production and the director, and this means that I've got a family to keep up and you as you may well understand I've got to make money <laughs> to feed them. Well, I'm very moved with everything that's happening up here. No, truly. I, it's impressive, apart from sharing this panel with all of these people next to me. And as regards to liberation as an actor, well, at least in my case, one addresses uh, your each film, and each film has its own logic behind it, behind it, and its and its own truth. You have to find it, the differences, and the different characters that you have to portray. But in this film, not at all. I think that we all got involved, and we had to jump in the deep end. We had to uh, take the journey f with uh, and and be very truthful in the way we portrayed the actor and trying to seek this in the character. And adding to what Ricardo says to work with Damian is very easy, especially because one always tries to do a good job. The question is when you've got a director who is capturing each of the different folds and level that the character has to portray, in that sense, it's much easier to work with great directors that direct you is always a pleasure and, and it increases the level of your work. I'm not too happy with what Leonardo just said, but I'll qualify our answers as as the conference goes on. Over here. A question for Damian Siflon. I would like to know whether the order of the different uh, tales was the same, and what was the relationship when you choose actor, character, character, actor? 
Well, the order in which the, the tales are exactly in the same way as I wrote them, but it's not that I proposed it that way. In fact, I tested other different orders. I forgot about the order in which I'd written the script and the tales, and the tale it threw out a lo another a sequence of stories. There's a reason why of each tale, the first one, I think, because it's so brief and how powerful it is, it could only be at the beginning. It's like a teaser, and it operates like a prologue as an opening and to maintain the tone in which the rest of the film is going to show. The last one, because of the change that the characters go through at the end, I discovered that it could only go at the end, and after this the film can't, can, couldn't continue. And then the rest, it respects the exact order in which they emerge naturally on the script, in the script. And the other question was, the choice of actor and um, actor character, character actor. Well, I wrote some of the tales with actors in mind. I knew I didn't. I wanted to work with uh, Ricardo. Obviously, he's the great Argentinian actor. So therefore, Ricardo reads the telephone guide, the yellow pages, and people go and watch it on the screen. So this makes me this makes me very happy as well. What he's just said. And this can be also a very interesting film. That could be for a great festival like such as this. Well, and why don't we do that? Oh, that's something that always intrigued me, of reading the yellow pages to Ricardo. And as you're here, we're going to work in a Spanish film. I'm going to take the yellow pages and I'm going to record you. I'm going to record an hour and a half of you reading the yellow pages and we'll see. And we'll check it and we'll see how you do. And I promise in the next San Sebastian Film Festival, we'll show it. I wanted to work with Leo and Erika Rivas is the only one of all of them that I'd worked with because we filmed a pilot project for TV that finally didn't come out in Mexico many, many years ago. We were two kids, really, and I felt like working with her, but it wasn't too clear in my what character that I was going to give her. And more than one, I offered two characters because I imagined them alternately in two different tales. I was interested to seeing how they imagine themselves and and how their feedback and along with the producers and there's a casting director Javier Oraya in our from Argentina we sent her a seared a, a blackboard in which we imagined a different possible films but I'm very very happy with the result much the film is m much better the one that, that I see that I that I that I saw beforehand and that's got to do to the acting and the performances and I know you're very happy with what I've just said as well but that's the truth. Hola. Hi. Hi, good afternoon. We're a bit more relaxed. Please, can you just take a photo and raise your hand to the camera if you'd be so kind? John Malkovich said no. Yes, that's perfect. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. John Malkovich said no. John Malkovich said no. Well, anyway, well, thank you very much on that. My, my question, the, the, the question is for all of you. It talks about um, a anger. There have been a lot of them over history in cinema, American Beauty, uh, A Day of Fury on TV, Breaking Bad. So therefore, there's anonymous people that all of a sudden get very angry with society. And what do you think about um, anger from a cinematographic standpoint and to the actors, whether you believe, would you have liked to have played any cinematographic anger role that I've just mentioned or any other? La primera parte, la... The first part, Agustin could respond to who, who, who we haven't heard so far, for, unfortunately. Well, anger ha makes a lot of sense in cinema because it involves a lot of tension and catharsis. And you've mentioned Days of Fury and films where they do appear in this film specifically. I think that anger and rage is very therapeutic in this sense in this film because it produces an enormous liberation in who, who, who enjoys and vibrates with the film. And I think the film uh, fulfills when films uh, touch very sensitive issues. It causes a liberation in the audience without having to turn you into a sociopath. Path. I think our culture is different. The Anglo-Saxon, for example, culture where people, the truth, what they said, uh, it's called sociopathy, it's been diagnosed, and the people that suffer this normally 
wipe out the company and they kill indiscriminately any person they see who, is, who has a happy face because supposedly they think that they've taken away their success and their happiness. I think here Damian gives us very valuable medicine which allows us to liberate ourselves and release ourselves and to vibrate without hurting anyone. And I think that's a well-being that we feel when we read the script and also when we left the film after watching it. And that's it. I agree with what my brother have just said because it's a film that talks about rage and it talks about, in effect, it provokes a liberation in the audience and that's why you identify with it. But we have to separate, especially with certain American films, the one that you mentioned, A Day of Fury. It's not a film that is in favour and that we take justice and that the character becomes a person who wants to take justice. No, he talked about sociopaths and all of a sudden they enter into a hamburger joint and start to kill every all the customers in a hamburger place. These are day-to-day -day rages that are provoked because of situations that are absolutely easy to recognize in which, apart from this, one has dreamt Bureaucracy, for example, which is a brutal problem in Argentina, imagine, but in Spain, imagine what it's like. So therefore, I don't drive, but identify absolutely, I don't drive. I don't know what it is to be frustrating to have a car and drive a car. I don't understand what that's about, but I identify myself absolutely with Ricardo. I've never been a bride at any wedding, but I can understand that she discovers on the day of her wedding her sexy husband with such a very nice, very nose, has laid with a much better looking girl than her and dresses much better than her because she can understand. If I were a bride, I would take her like her and I'd turn her around and spin her around and hope that she works out a she got the worst of it at the end of the day. So therefore, these are things that are recognizable that on a day-to-day, -day, but they are no no case are they people that seek justice, and that's very important. And the catharsis, you've got to be able to manage it because you can do, you can make ridiculous with a very catharsis-type or cathartic uh, uh, tale, but it's very good, it liberates, and it's very good in desire as well. Damian, hi. Yeah, we've got it. Tonet from Ilfiltrats. Hi, how are you? From the beginning, I was going to ask a question to Damian, but as what we're just listening to, Pedro, we've been talking about social aspects, and I'm going to be very serious. That I've always got serious moments. We were seeing, I decided to turn the libertad. We're seeing that as of late, that cinema is going towards social issues. Our program is exactly that. The cinema, sorry guys, it's also for you, but it's also for the people who buy a ticket uh, in, in a cinema theatre that demonstrates our philosophy. Now philosophy, okay. Our cinema is for the people and f is, for the, is the people's and is for the people, but no, but I can answer that if you want. My question is, do you believe that cinema is playing its role vis-a-vis -vis, um, the audiences now because sometimes becoming too social in general, cinema. I didn't understand the, the under question. I'm trying, trying to understand you, by the way. No, if it represents now more and more so the situation that we're in, cinema is becoming more and more not on, it's claiming everything that society is claiming. Well, I think cinema even the most abstract cinema, or even <clears throat> the most radical time cinema, de 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 uh, well, it represents the moment you're living in to a certain extent, and very deeply too. I also believe novelists and cinematographic fiction to talk about the story of a country. Uh, we, in a history book, that is what you can you can understand the films that were made at that time and then subsequently. So therefore, I think the moment that we're living in, or the times that we've lived in in the past, are are present in our cinema, in our films. To talk, we're talking about general issues here. We're being generic, but it's present. Unfortunately, it's present in the way that films are produced. The films are being made 
in a, under a state of, I need you to look at me if you want me to answer you, in a state of absolute precariousness. That precar precariousness is like a mirror that reflects exactly, shall we say, the other side of the camera, which is the audience, our country, and the social class, all of the class, social classes, the truth be said, in our society. And, and finally, Damian, the original question, your three reference films of this film, or in general, reference films that have guided you to come all the way to this project? No. There were no films that guided me to make this film. No truth. I saw the monsters after writing the script, and I found a lot of points in common. And they talked about monsters. My old man liked uh, monsters, and I'd never seen it. And the truth is, I found a connection there. And when I was a kid, well, every time my uh, surprising stories or story, tales from the crypt, all of those are on the verge of reality. The Alfred Hitchcock presents a series and the anthologies of, of tales like me very much. And I think that the film recovers that type of spirit. Thank you. Hi, a question for Damian. And that is, where does the idea of making this film stem from? Is there, is any, was there a paper clipping, an article, or were you driving in the car? Where does the idea stem from? Well, I think that I can connect with each and every one of the beginning of the tales. I know where they start from through our experience. I can remember and provoke images and where it was the car was taken away by the crane in many cancers and most of them were very badly signaled and you couldn't park the car. There was an injustice there when they where the crane took away the car and the tow truck, that is to say, one car plane and you can't achieve your objective, so that you get worn out. You don't want to lose your life, waste your life in demonstrating that you're right. You're right, and I understand the indignation that that can cause. I've been in weddings where there was a lot of attention, absolute attention, where many knew something that the bride didn't know or that the groom didn't know, and you could realize the greater contained violence in each of the smiles in each party and each celebration and wedding celebration. None ended up like this wedding. And, and I calculate that we can all fill up a plane with characters that have disturbed us <laughs> throughout, throughout our lives. But the truth is that what the film is, is to transport those conflicts of our day-to-day -day life, many of those things that have to do with a social reality, to transport them to the free imagination and fiction side of things. I think it's a film that in each of the different takes and each decision is celebrating the existence of cinema, the existence of n narrative and fantasy, and it... Uh, it allows these characters to, to talk freely about those things that we fantasize about, but as we repress ourselves, we don't go that far. But through cinema, we can achieve it. Ultima Last question, please. Hi, good afternoon. Congratulations for your work on this film. I would like to ask Agustin. Hi, how are you? How was it to work as a producer with Pedro? and as a director with Damian, and whether there was any moment that it occurred to you to develop any of these little large and large tales in a feature film of any of them, because I think they're fascinating, all of them. Thank you. I think... To you, no, no, I don't think so, no. I think for the time being, I think the tales are going to remain as they are. As Pedro said at the beginning, to work in the production of this film was an enormous pleasure. Desired over many, many years of courtship that Damian knows that we've exercised. We've seen each other in Buenos Aires. I remember the night that I had dinner with Damian in Buenos Aires and uh, Coppola was on the, preparing another film on the other side. Yes, uh, Tetro was there, yes, that's right. And it was been a very long waiting period because it's been many years, but it's come through forth with a film that we adore, that we loved it from the outset. Pedro and I have shared, we shared from the first time we read the script, we shared how easy it was, the relationship with, with the production in Argentina and they are the people that have carried out the production work. And I think Callese is a production company that we hope that we can work for many years k &S films that is in with Damian and with other directors as well because we've been really tuned in and the feeling that we've felt and how we should approach 
directors, creators and cinema is exactly the same as we have here. That is to say, of sharing an adventure, accompany them and to make sure that that dream that director has can become a reality and that we can all participate in it. So therefore I can just think, say things that are very, very positive and very good. Okay, thank you very much. No, I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry we can't hear. No, but we've already given the last word to the last question. I'm very sorry, but that's the last question. There are a lot of people ahead of you as well. Thank you very much to all of you.